Welcome to the Rise to the Challenge podcast. Joined today, she's a country singer and songwriter. It's Presley Tennant. How are you doing today, Presley? I'm doing so great. How are you? Doing good. We're so excited to have you on the show to talk about your Rise to the Challenge. What we like to do with all of our guests is go right to the beginning. Talk about where you're from and what were you involved in growing up? So I'm from a small town in Southern California called Marco. And, you know, I grew up playing soccer, thinking that that is what I was going to do. And then I started taking vocal lessons just for fun, that type of thing. I was like doing all the karaoke nights at like local Taco Tuesdays at our (laughs) restaurant near us. And so I started taking vocal lessons and was really intrigued with all things music. And I started doing some little local talent shows and I was introduced to a girl group where um, I ended up joining the girl group and they kind of just introduced me to everything that was all music and entertainment industry. And I just fell in love with it. I was like, this is what I am meant to do. I'm supposed to be here and I'm supposed to be doing this. Um, and from then I, I just continued on and I stopped playing soccer. I made the choice to continue with music. I feel like that was a much better choice than <laughs> continuing to play, playing soccer. Um, as well as just, I mean, it led me to my, to where I was on season 16 of The Voice after the group ended and I was 16 years old then. And then the group or I, The Voice ended. And so I kind of did a little soul searching and I ultimately ended up where I am today. And I'm very, very proud of that journey. You talked about soccer played a big part. What got you involved in soccer? Was there an athlete out there or your family liked playing it or watching it and you wanted to enjoy it? So the rest of my family, for the most part, all played soccer. My dad um, coached all of my teams growing up for the most part. I think I had like one or two teams that we didn't. Um, And so I always had that love and appreciation for it. And I just like, I don't know, I loved I love the challenge of it and like being around people and the team aspect and, and getting to have a meet playing with so many friends and whatnot. It was just so much fun. And then I, like my dad, I feel like has really taught me because he was my coach. It taught me a lot of discipline. Cause even though like, I feel like when you have coaches and like, they aren't your parents, they like still like have that boundary up and they're like, Oh, you can't like say something. Cause they might take it the wrong way. My dad was like, Nope, you're my daughter. You don't get the special treatment. That type of thing. <laughs> And so um, I feel like that taught me a lot, uh, especially about what I use today with discipline and determination and passion and whatnot. So uh, yeah, I, I feel like that kind of answered the question, kind of rambled on a little bit. <laughs> well, I love how you mentioned about your dad being a coach because my dad was not my baseball coach and it was kind of the same thing where people thought, oh, you're going to get the luxury because you're going to get to play whatever position. No, I, I feel like I didn't get that luxury. It was kind of like the bottom. And to me, it kind of made me want to work harder for that spot. And so I was like, fine, I don't need to be the star. I'm fine just being here, just enjoying my time. Do you feel that kind of built that bond with your dad where you got to be on the field with each other every weekend or whenever the games were, you kind of built that over the years? Yeah, I definitely would say that that has, was one of like the biggest things with my bond with my dad, just because it was something that we both really loved and we got to do it together. Um, instead of him just like dropping me off at practice, being like, okay, I'll pick you up in two hours. Like, no, it was, he was there with me and then even like after practices, I would say 95% of the time I would end up staying and he and I would just like continue to practice like one-on-one just to make sure that like I'm doing good because no, like when you're like the coach's daughter and everyone's like, oh, you're going to get the special treatment. I'm like, no, I got the special treatment because I worked really hard, yep. but otherwise he would not play me. I, I understood that fact. And I knew I was going to be played because I wanted to be played. Um, and so I feel like that really brought us really close together. You talked about later about being in a music group. Soccer is definitely a team atmosphere. Was this like the first big way of saying, how do I handle a group to prepare you for something in the future? I mean, I feel like soccer is very much a, obviously is a team sport. Um, And you have to have that communication with everybody. And I feel like that really transferred into when I was with the girl group. Because of the fact, I mean, there definitely was different aspects of it. I was not very heavily dance based, but all the other dancers or all the other girls were. I was mainly vocals. And so, like, that's what I knew how to do. And so it was kind of like 
we helped each other out when we both needed it. Cause it's like, I know I can do certain dance moves or I needed help with it. So they would help me out or I mean, it was vice versa with vocals and whatnot. So I thought that was really cool because we all got along so well. And I definitely could say that my experience over in soccer definitely translated over into the girl group. Looking at your love for music, what were your music inspirations? Was there an artist, a genre that kind of made you fall in love with? I would say I really loved a lot of like, well, female vocal powerhouses. I just always had gravitated towards them, whether it was Carrie Underwood, Miranda Lambert, um, Christina Aguilera, Whitney Houston, Etta James, anybody who had this big, powerful voice and they're really able to use it in ways like even when they aren't singing super powerful and they pull it back and it gives like that moment of why the powerful voice is so special. Like I've always just gravitated towards that. And so it was a little bit of like pop, soul, country, a lot of rock. I love me some seventies rock. Um, just a little bit of everything, but a lot of very big voices. You mentioned a lot of names that were iconic and later in your career, you kind of talked about being a country singer and stuff. Did it ever think about with that girl group, like what was our genre? What is our theme or identity? Because you look at a lot of the big groups out there, Pussycat Dolls, Destiny's Child, thinking of girl groups, they all have some kind of identity that made them stick out to where their fan base just loved and craved every song that came out. Yeah, I mean, definitely within that girl group, we were all, I want to say 10 to... 13 years old um and we were a christian based pop girl group and so everything that we did was kind of like subliminally put in there of like the message of god which i thought was really cool because you wouldn't necessarily think that's what it is about until you really listen to lyrics and you're like oh my gosh that makes so much sense um just because it was able to be more versatile and people who may not necessarily believe in god could be like oh i really enjoy this music so it's not just like bam in your face um and so I thought that was really cool. And so we definitely knew who we were, but after the group, I continued on the pop route, um, just kind of more of like the mainstream pop that you hear on like radio. Mm -hmm. um, and so I continued on with that. And then after The Voice, I did a little soul searching and I found my way to, back to my roots. And that was country music. I mean, I'm from a very country, small town in Southern California. And everyone's like, is that even possible out there? <laughs> And so I'm like, yeah, we're the only one about in Southern California. There's a few other ones, but my town is definitely what I really love. Um, and so it brought me back to my roots and I can, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Before music, did you enjoy writing like storytelling or poems and things like that? And that where it carried over to creating songs, it kind of helped because you had that kind of idea of how to put together something. Yeah, I mean, I, in school, I hated writing. I could not <laughs> write an essay for the life of me because I was like, there's too many rules to this. <laughs> um, but I did really, I wrote down in my journal almost like every day, just like as stupid as I like, got, oh, dear journal, this is my, <laughs> like, it was <laughs> my day today. Um, stuff like that. I had always written in that sense. And then I wasn't until I think I was about 14, 13 or 14, and that's when I really started to like get into writing songs and I've been doing it ever since. If you weren't a singer, what would that dream job be for you? I know it would be something still in the music industry. I couldn't imagine it any other <laughs> way. <laughs> probably songwriting. Um, I think I would probably love to be songwriting or even just like in the, like producing and whatnot. I feel like I can see a lot of things. Um, like when I first hear them, I'm like, oh my God, I have so many ideas. So I feel like that's a, um, a big thing, but probably songwriting more. You talked about at age 16, you got the opportunity to be on The Voice. Mm -hmm. Before that season, did you watch it with your family or did you watch it and you always thought, oh, maybe I have this opportunity to go on the show? I did. I mean, I wouldn't say I was like an avid watcher. I was like, oh, should everyone sit downstairs and watches it right then and there. But I would always watch it like on YouTube and when they, like the day after it would all come out or like the night of, and I'd catch up on there. Um, and I've always thought, like I had a bunch of friends who were on it a couple of seasons before me and they had a phenomenal experience. And so they were always telling me like, oh, like, you should do it. This could be fun. And I was like, eh, I'm 
okay, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Um, and then when I was 16, they reached out to me and I was just like, you know what? It doesn't hurt. We might as well try it out. And if it's not meant to be, then it's not meant to be. And so I tried out for it and I mean, it ended up working out. I got through like each different round, like month by month. And I was like, oh my God, we're going to, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. So I was very excited about that. And I had a blast on the show, but definitely when I was watching it before, I wouldn't have been like, oh, I'm going on the show. I've just been like, oh, this is so cool to watch. Did you ever think about going on a different music show? I don't even know when American Idol, America's Got Talent. I don't even think the X Factor was on at that time. I I don't know if it was on. I think American Idol was on their break. Okay. Um, but I grew up watching American Idol, at least as like when I was super young. I think the, I think I was, I think it, the year I was born is when the show started. So it's like one of those things that like they were just automatically my parents watched. Um, but I don't know. I knew I kind of wanted to be on any of the shows, but I just didn't know which one. So talk about that experience, that first round there, the blind audition, what was going through your mind? How did you prepare yourself for that exact moment? So I feel like when I was there for blind auditions, I think I was there for about a month. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to get better lighting. There we go. Um, I was there for about a month and I was just kind of going through like I was in, still in school. So I was doing the whole school thing. And then I would have rehearsals and interviews and all these different things. And I was just enjoying every bit of it. I knew my song. I knew what I was going to sing. And I felt like I was on top of the world. And then all of a sudden it comes to my blind audition day. And I am like, the doors are about to open up. There's like two sided doors. Um, and they like, they basically said, as soon as like they open up, you got to start walking. And I was like, okay, I'm fine thinking I'm like okay I got this I'm I'm feeling great right now and then all of a sudden the doors opened up and like all that feeling just went away out the window and it was like oh god bye um knees started buckling I was like shaking I was so nervous and I was like I don't know there was also stairs like going up to the stage and I thought I was gonna trip because I was wearing heels and I was like this is a mess I'm gonna fall and eat eat the floor and the coaches are gonna turn around and all they're gonna hear is a big thud and be like oh my god is she okay? Not like a, oh, that sounded good. It's like, no, is she okay? That's what I felt like was going to happen. And then, I don't know, I made it up the stairs. Thank God. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the song, like the music started and then just all those nerves really went away. And I felt just very comfortable and at peace. And I felt like I can get through the song. And then once Kelly turned, it was just like game over. Like I was like, okay, I know I'm good. I don't need to worry about anything anymore. Did you get to pick the song or did they kind of give you an idea of what you needed to sing? There, for the most part, they let everybody pick their music as long as so no one else had like auditioned with the same song. I think there was one girl who auditioned with the same song that I did like prior to. Um, and they gave me the, they gave me the song and then she, they gave her like her second choice song. Um, but also it's just like a, who was what, what rights can be played on the show and whatnot. When Kelly turned around, we talked about your love for American Idol. Did that kind of like, wow, I, I'm like staring at this person that is a huge icon in the music industry and I have the chance to work with her now. Yeah, I mean, Kelly Clarkson has been my idol since I first started singing. I think I was seven years old and I would sing every little thing. Like she was my first concert ever. And every time I would go and sing at like a talent show, I'd always sing the song because of you. That was just a given. As well as like, I had the American Idol game on like the PS2. Like, <laughs> so I'd be like, Dee. or no, it was Breakaway. Um, I think it was Breakaway. Like the, I'll spread my wings and yep. fly. Yep, always that song. Um, and so it's like, and then when I, when she turned, it was just like, I have never been starstruck in my life except there were two people. One of them was a soccer player. Don't know why, but it was just like, I just was really starstruck. And then the other one was Kelly Clarkson. And I was freaking out. And like, normally I'm pretty good at like holding like my composure. I just couldn't then. I was like, I looked like my jaw was like to the floor the entire time. I was like catching flies in my mouth as I was talking to her. Or I guess I wasn't talking, but she was talking to me. And I was just like, <laughs> the entire time. so yeah, that was, that was a good time. 
I feel like any normal person would have the same reaction. If they're like cool, calm, collected, I'd be like, nah, that's not right. I would be the same way. If someone turned around, I'm like, is this a dream? Hold on. Did they really just hit that button? Can we check the chair, please? I think I did. I felt like my voice was going to crack. And then after that, I was like, yeah, I'm good. But like literally during the song, I was like, I'm going to start dancing now. That's what I felt like. Like I felt like I wanted to do like a little like jig and like jump up and down. But I was like, I can't. Not yet. I got a minute left. We got to get through that. So. Did you ever worry about, not worry, but did you ever think about how millions of people would be watching this performance and your exposure in the music industry would grow big time just in the short amount of time you're just auditioning? I mean, yeah, I, I didn't quite think about it during that time. I was just kind of riding through the wave of it. Um, and I wasn't necessarily thinking like, oh, what's going to happen with this? So I was just like, oh, this seems fun. Like, why not? We'll try it. Um, until the episode started airing. And then I realized how much of an overwhelming amount of responses there were. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is a lot more than I thought was going to happen in a good way. Um, I didn't expect that much love or anything like that. So I was very, very grateful for every single little thing that happened. Everybody who has been on my journey since The Voice um but yeah I definitely wasn't expecting the amount of exposure that it was to happen and like the amount of like I guess a name that I left behind since the show looking at each of the rounds what was the most challenging part of the whole voice experience for you I would say for me the most challenging part would be I feel like honest, I feel like there's two ways I can go with this. And it's more of like the biggest, okay, actually I do know my answer. This one I think was the biggest one. There was two different ones, but this one is definitely the one. And it was figuring out how to deal with the responses I did get back. There was a lot of love. Do not get me wrong. There was more love that outweighed it than the bad. But when the bad came, especially from people that I was at school with and then I was like got a bunch of videos and not videos but like audios of like my friends that I thought were my friends um saying stuff I definitely that's like what tore me down and then it kind of took me a while to build myself back up and be like okay like I'm proud of who I am I shouldn't have to feel guilty for the things that I that I went through and that I worked hard for I shouldn't have to dumb myself down to let other people know that like we're good like no I've, I've been the same person the entire time and I don't want people to think that I changed since then um and so I think that was really hard to get through but I know that I ended up getting through it and I was okay um and people like once I came back to school they were like oh yeah she's like normal as she was before like she's the same person not like a, oh they're thinking she's gonna go on this tv show and it's gonna get to her head and she's gonna change and I'm like I don't know uh uh-uh. I was like I just need my where's my homework answers I need that <laughs> <laughs> no um, no it was but that was like the biggest challenge and I feel like it took me a while to get there to overcome it but I definitely got there at the end of it I think I'm glad you mentioned that because nowadays with social media you just don't know how people are going to react or how people will present themselves on a big platform even for me like I'm not this big podcast person, but I'm still the same person when I hit the end button on this call. And I think you mentioned that where you're the same person, but you now saw the true identity of your friends to see, could they still be there for you, even though you're in a different time and you're doing something that you love. And I think support is what we need. Even if someone gets a big break, you should be proud of them because they've worked hard. You don't know maybe what the behind the scenes like, but you showed the strength and the overcoming all of those things and where you are today and you've learned so much about yourself. Yeah. I mean, I think it's so important to always be excited for other people's success. Yep. Just because it's so, number one, it's so much easier just to be nice to everybody and congratulate them, even if you may not be on good terms with them, but it's so easy to, instead of dwelling on like that, that feeling of being like jealousy and whatnot. Just think of it as like, a, oh my gosh, like I'm so happy that they did it. And I can't wait to be up there with them. Like, I feel like that's like the mentality that you should go after. But 
it's just so exciting to see your friends succeed because you know how yeah. cool it is like how they're feeling it and like if it's happened to you before or it hasn't yet but you're like you could just be there and be like so proud of them and know where they started from where they're ending at and I feel like that is the biggest thing that I and I really um I think it's just so important to have that mentality on do you ever look back at your performance and watch it to see, wow, I did this, or I sang this song? Just kind of reflect in that moment. I, I do every once in a while. Um, just to kind of like almost, I feel like I sound very conceited when I say that. <laughs> videos. Yeah, I do. No. Um, I just feel like, I don't know, it's cool to look back at it and be like, oh my gosh, this is how I was like four years ago. Or, like, this is what I was doing, like, two years ago with my life. Like, how exciting is that? As, like, a 16-year-old, I got to live through all these things. And even, like, when I was younger, and I got to meet all these incredible people. And I'm just, I'm very fortunate. And I'm so grateful for everything. So to see, like, where I started at and where I'm still going is so exciting. Because I'm like, I know that the only more place I can go is up from here. Yep. So. During your solo career right now, what is the theme of your songs? Are they particular moments that you've experienced, things that you've seen in the public, or things that you're like, maybe I can write something about this? So I feel like it's a little bit of everything. Um, I write a lot out of personal experience, or even if it's like my friends have gone through something and they've told me something about it, and I like try to put myself in their shoes. I would definitely say that a lot of my music, or not a lot of my music, all of my music is just an extension of myself. And so I want people to realize when they listen to my music that this is still like exactly who I am, just maybe with a little more, you know, pizzazz every once in a while. <laughs> um, but like I have my song, Hope's That Strong, that um, I released last year, but I think it's just so important to me because my dad is a big part of my life. And so I wrote the song for him for his birthday and a couple of years ago. And since Father's Day was coming around, as it was just a couple of days ago, um, I feel like it's just important for people to see like, oh, like this is what she looks up to the most in her life. And that's just a part of her. That's what, who, what her story is. And so I feel like all of my music can kind of relate to it in some way, somehow that this is part of my story. We talked about how the, your friends kind of question certain things. Did they ask you, what are these songs about? Because maybe have you not expressed what you've gone through or things that the songs represent? And this was kind of a way to build that bond even more with those friendships. I would say, I mean, yes and no. I feel like depending on the certain songs, I I mean, it's hard for me to say like, oh, like Heaven Sent Hell Bound was about anything in particular. Like It's not like they can be like, oh, well, I know exactly what that's about. I'm like, <laughs> well, it's just kind of like, I, don't know, I think I wrote that song like based off of like an idea from like a TV show I was watching and I was like, oh, that could be kind of cool. Um, but no, once I explained myself a little bit more, I definitely started to see that they were starting to understand it and they're like, oh, like this is like this is wrong. One of your recent songs, Gamble on You, love the cover art of it with the casino theme and stuff. What does that represent for you? So Gamble on You to me. I feel like kind of shows the side of taking the risk because I also realized that it's not necessarily the your traditional type of country song um and so it has a little bit more of like the soul and R&B influences um as well as like a little bit of like rock in there and so I want people to realize like even within the title gamble on you I feel like with gambling it's always a risk um and with love, it's always a risk. You never know what somebody is going to take away from it or put into it. Um, and so I just want people to really realize that this song is about taking risk and not just trying to do things differently, I feel like. I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. And I think that is what's so key for me when I listen to songs is, can I connect or can I understand what is the artist trying to portray in see the influence in there. And I think a lot of people, when they're going to listen to that, they're going to figure out that they're going through something similar. They're taking those risks. It's even almost in that title, you can kind of see what you're mentioning in your song. Yeah. And I think it's important to visually see it for you to really understand it. I keep moving forward and there's like, <laughs> but. Do you have, do you like doing 
lyric videos more, music videos, just making the audio songs? Like what is your kind of favorite part of the making the music? I feel like my favorite part is always being in the studio and like starting from just having like a little work tape and then being with the session musicians and then getting to see it like them. Literally, I swear it is magic. They are like freaking music wizards. <laughs> I don't understand it. They can listen to a song like one time, break down a couple numbers and they're like, okay, cool. Let's go on and record it. And they go in and bam, the song is done. And I'm like, okay, just do my job for me. So cool. Like I, I, it's so freaking cool. Excuse me. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. It's not that You're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is the coolest thing I have ever seen just because it's like, you start from like almost nothing, like just like a guitar maybe and some lyrics. And then by the end of like maybe like 20 minutes max for the most part, you're completely done with the song. And I'm like, how is this possible? Like, how did you understand? How did you read my mind of exactly what I wanted? It's, I don't know, that's my definitely my favorite part and then putting in the vocals and then hearing the final production. How has the support been with your family and on your music journey as this has been a dream of yours, a passion, and you are going at it full force? How has that support been for you? My, my family has been some of my biggest supporters um, and they have been there every step of the way. And I am very, very, very lucky for it because I know if I didn't have probably that amount of support from them, I probably wouldn't be where I either am, where I am today or even be doing this at all. Because there is like, I feel like there's days even like when I get down to myself, they're the ones that are like, it's going to be okay. Like, you're going to be all right. And, and I don't know. It just, it's just so comforting to know that like if something were to change, granted, I know it's not, so I'm not going to let that happen. But, <laughs> If something were to change, I know I can always help them to, to get through anything. So I'm very, very lucky for them. Do you have a memorable performance, a memorable stage that you have performed on? Honestly, I would say the past two shows, or maybe a couple before that, but earlier this year, uh, Boots in the Park, I got to open up for um, Tim McGraw and Dustin Lynch in my hometown. And so Performing is already cool, but like performing in my hometown is like even cooler because I'm like, oh my God, like these are the people who have like been with me on my journey all throughout. I know, I feel like I know everyone in my town, but it's also really nerve wracking because I'm not going to go to Target the next day and see them all. And like, <laughs> what was that yesterday? I'm like, girl, I don't know either. I don't know. Like it's like that type of thing. So it's a little nerve wracking because they're going to say something. I'm going to be like, <laughs> don't kill me. Don't hurt me. <laughs> like that type of feel. Um, but then as well as a couple weeks after that, I got to open up for Blake Shelton and Brett Young and Bobby Pierce. And so those were definitely two of my favorite performances. When you're looking at these opportunities where you're being able to perform on the same stage as those individuals, when someone's listening to this and they have that same dream, what would you tell that individual? If you're going to get to that moment, this is what you need to work on or need to do or have that mindset to get there. I would say, I mean, this is something that I've always lived by. I mean, when I was on The Voice, I was working with Kelly Clarkson and she was telling me, she was like, you are the one that goes home at the end of the day and looks at yourself in the mirror. So you need to be okay with everything that you're doing whether it's even as stupid as like a song selection how you sing it what it means to you you have to be the one that's okay with it and so she was like so you might as well just make it your most authentic self and let it truly be you and so that's something that I've always lived by and I would I would say to somebody like you just need to be yourself because and you need to believe in yourself because it's no longer believable if you don't believe it so everyone else around you they're only going to support you so much, but if you don't like believe in yourself truly, then how are they supposed to do it for you? Yep. Like I, that was the thing that I, I really lived by and I would continue telling everybody. I totally agree. I think being authentic. I mean, if you have the passion for it, your friends and family are going to see that you're passionate, but once you start doubting or you kind of stop doing anything about it, they're not going to make you push you towards that. And I always tell my friends where they talk about something that they're passionate about. And I try to encourage them to make sure you keep going and do it. But then once they stop giving up, it's like, 
can't really do anything else because if you're not passionate about it, why should I be passionate about for you? So I think that's so true what you mentioned, because nowadays, like you mentioned, you go home and look in the mirror. Nowadays, you see everyone, comments, likes, reactions, things like that. Social media plays a big part that it changes people's minds on what they love and what they now don't love anymore. Yeah, very true. Looking towards the fun future, there's so many stages and opportunities. What's that dream stage you want to perform on? Oh my goodness. I wouldn't even, oh, actually I do know this answer. <laughs> I, I was thinking like, oh, like there's like tours, like just headlining a tour. No, I would love to play at the Grand Ole Opry. That is okay. what I would love to play at. Just, I took a tour every, uh, a little bit ago the last, I think, like not the trip last trip I was there, but like a couple of trips before that. Um, and I just got to walk in there and like be backstage. And this, there's so much history and so much like musical magic in there. That is one place that I want to perform. I get, when I talk to musicians, that is definitely the one place that a lot of people mention. And you mentioned it, it's iconic. And it's just a dream destination for a lot of people because it plays a special heart in even the top stars today. And so do you feel that being in California, it kind of keeps you kind of stable in that area? Or do you feel that eventually you might branch out and maybe live somewhere else, travel a lot more, especially with the pandemic, not as where it was two years ago. Yeah, I mean, I am already going back and forth between here and Nashville all the time. I was just out there last week for CMA Fest, and so that was a lot of fun. Um, but I definitely can say that I will probably be moving, not very anytime soon, but will definitely want to end up moving out there um within the next couple of years I think it's just I don't know it's a little hard for me to go out there right now because I can't but at least by myself because I can't even rent a rental car yet so I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be 25 but I got five <laughs> more years. so um I don't know it's it's easier right now to just travel back and forth all the time than it is to be out there without really knowing anybody um and just starting over out there when I could just start to build little by little out there every time I go out. We've talked about music being such a big part of your life, but what's something people don't know about Presley? What are some other things that you love to do that maybe people don't know about? Ooh. You know, I feel like I'm a pretty open book, at least on social media. Like <laughs> a little bit about me. Uh, oh. But I would, someone's walking in right now. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's all good. Uh, I would definitely say, I don't know, though I feel like I'm pretty active and like love just hanging out with my friends in my free time. And I don't know, everything that I do for the most part is music related. So there's not too much that I do otherwise outside of it. Do you like having that identity of music is that identity because it's so much passion and so much that you love to do every day? Yeah, I mean, for me, music, is such a big part of my life and I don't know what I would do without it. Um, I feel like I would just be lost in whatever I am doing. If for some reason I was like, oh, I don't want to do music anymore. I'd be like, where do I even start from? Like, I'm literally starting over new. Um, and so I think it's really important that I always have at least some sort of music in me in some eye, like in, in my identity at all times. You talked about the different music is your identity someone that's listening to this interview that has that same passion, how should they get started? Because everyone's journey is completely different. They might not go through the same routes, but it's all about certain things that are similarities in someone's musical journey. I would just say a lot of it is just going out and putting yourself out there um, and meeting new people and making connections and building relationships. I feel like that is so important. Um, because I, when you first put yourself out there, a lot of people are still trying to get to know you. Yep. Person in there is gonna be like, oh my gosh, like all of this, like how are you, what do you do, all that type of thing. And so as it's how you continue those relationships and build those because they want to continue to work with people that are uh, that they know and that are good people. And so I feel like that is a big thing. Is you continue meeting new people and putting yourself out there and and 
you don't say no because you think it's not a good opportunity. Everything is everything is so important because I feel like it's the power of ten. Even if you play a show for ten people, those ten people are gonna go tell yep. three five of their friends. You never know. And then it all just starts building slowly by slowly. Looking back at your beginning, would you have changed how you went throughout your musical journey? Or do you feel each step you took has made you learn more about yourself to get to where you are today? I would say I wouldn't change a single thing. I really wouldn't. I am very, very proud of of everything that I have done leading up to where I am. I've worked very hard. I mean, granted, are there certain things that I wish I could little, like redo a little bit, like to fix it? But um, yes, but no, because also without those, I wouldn't have learned. Um, and I feel like that's really important. If you continue to learn and you don't stop continuing to grow, then you're going to go so far. Like you're you're unstoppable. You're limitless at that point. But as soon as you limit yourself and you're like, oh, I wish I could go back and like really change that outcome, no, then you then you uh, can't grow much anymore. So what does the future look like for you? What are you hoping to accomplish? What's exciting coming in the next few years, both personally and professionally for you? So I'm releasing a lot of new music. I'm very, very excited for that. Um, there is a song coming out very soon. I can't say too much yet, but it's all my social media. You can find it all there too, as well as just a lot of shows and performing. And I'm very excited to be keep playing live again. I feel like I, the last couple of shows that I did, it's just been so nice to like actually be able to be around people. And I'm, I'm very, very excited for that. How often do you try to put out new music? Do you have a certain deadline or how does that play out? I feel like it's more of a, every couple months after like one of my songs and I'm like, all right, I feel like I, I want some new material out there. I want people to see what what's coming out next. So I wouldn't say there's a set time, but there's definitely like it's a feeling where I'm like, all right, we got to put out something new. I want it out. So, do you feel it's easier to do singles than try to put a whole album together or an EP out? I would definitely say that singles are a little bit easier, just because of the fact that it's one song and you don't have to overthink too much. Like you just listen to that one song a couple times and you'd be like, right, I want this one out instead of like going through and trying to figure out which song you want on like your first track, your second track, third track, like all orders and picking out the songs. I feel like that, that could be a little more time, time consuming. So singles are easier, I feel. The final question I'll ask you for someone that's listening to this interview based on your journey and experience, what tips or advice would you give them to overcome obstacles, accomplish their goals and rise to the challenge? I would say just be persistent with what you love because if you truly love it you won't give up um and to keep keep testing yourself and keep trying to push yourself because i feel like that's just so important everyone can try to push you to be better but as long as you believe in yourself and you really try to do it you dig deep you're going to get to where you want well presley i want to thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about your rise to the challenge you're inspiring so many people and we're excited to see what the future looks like for you Thank you so much for having me. It's been a blast.